So if you ask most any swing expert who the top three swings of all time were, all of them are going to have Ben Hogan in the top three, and many of them will start Ben Hogan as number one best swing of all time. And supposedly Hogan, he had a secret. Well, right after this, let's talk a little bit about Ben Hogan's secret. No, no, no. Not the elusive one that nobody seems to really know as they argue that he took it to his grave with him or maybe passed it down to one or two people and they're not telling either. It's so powerful. No, not that secret. A different secret that is much more simple that you're going to be able to incorporate into your golf game fairly easily. Stay tuned. All right, so Hogan popularized a couple of really interesting concepts that are still really in play today, in vogue today. Now, one of those is the concept of the swing plane of the glass. So if I bow like this and Mr. Editor Guy can put a, uh, some lines running from the, the ball up through the base of my neck like that, you can see, so he gave us kind of the Hogan glass uh, pane which we were supposed to stay underneath. So we just did not ever want to get above the glass, but just stay on to anywhere below the glass and we'd be fine. So that's definitely a, you know, a Hogan popularized concept. Another concept that Hogan really advanced, it's actually coming back in vogue quite a bit today. And that's to have the kind of the left wrist bowed just before impact. Now, of course, in his illustrations, he shows the bow of the wrist this way, even at impact and just past impact. Now, Hogan didn't actually do that. He was actually coming out of the bow dynamically this way as he went through it. But certainly he had a little bit of a raised wrist like this coming into the ball. But no, this Hogan secret I'm going to show you today is much, much simpler. In fact, it will have nothing to do with your swing motion at all. So instead, Hogan understood kind of the geometry of the curve or the plane of the swing and how we would really, if we wanted our short irons to go straight to the target, we had to play them from a little bit of an open stance. And this is the mistake I see a lot of students make who come to me for the first time is they'll set up with a nine iron or a pitching wedge or something like that and they'll actually set up with their stance a little bit closed and right there i know they're already looking for trouble it's going to be much harder to hit it on the green even with the short club when the stance is closed you simply want to line here i've got a 56 degree sand wedge and i'm going to line this thing up to where my left foot is drawn back Oh, a good inch and a half, possibly even two inches. Now I can swing to my foot line. And the ball's going to come out straight to the target. My path is going to be straight, even though I was swinging around to the left along my foot line. Now with a six iron, a six iron doesn't attack as steeply as a 56 degree sand wedge. It's probably only a third as much. I'd like to be somewhere maybe two and a half degrees downwards on my six and I want to be maybe five to six degrees down on my 56 degree wedge. So it's a much steeper divot. Therefore, the ball will be pushed more. Now with the six iron, I'll probably just cut this in half. So that two in inches now is going to become more like one inch open to the target line. Now I'm trying to swing down the line. and the ball comes out with a very straight path. Now, if you're feeling pretty confident in those two ideas, you've got the two inch open wedge, about a one inch open mid iron. Well, a driver can be square. You can just start square, but if you're really swinging correctly with a driver, hopefully you're starting to create a little bit of upstrike. So if I'm coming in at the right angle and I'm bottoming out a few inches before impact, I'm going to catch this thing as the club starts to ascend. And that's going to be the way we can hit our drives the farthest. 
Now, if you're pretty darn sure that you're hitting up on the ball, I would go confirm this on a, a track man or a quad, something like that, get my angle of attack measured for certain that I'm consistently a few degrees upwards. Well, then the equation becomes the opposite way. You see, as I start to swing up on the ball, my club is going to be turning to the left. So if I catch the ball way out here on a 12 inch tee, you can see the club is moving several degrees left at this point. Just the nature of the, the, the natural arc that the club head is taking. So in that case, if you can guarantee that you're swinging up on the ball, then you can actually play out of a slightly closed stance to counter that. So you'll get a slightly rightward swing plane, a slightly upwards angle of attack, and that will result in a very, very straight club path and a lot of straight hitting. All right, so that's Hogan's simplest secret, something that you can actually incorporate without being a, a range hound. Remember, pull the left foot back on the short irons, start to square it up little by little, on the longer ones. Hey, thanks for watching. If you got some good value out of this tip in this video, I hope you subscribe and head over to my website, hititlonger.com, for even more great exclusive content. I'm Steve, and if I don't see you in the next video, I will see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.